You're listening to We Deep in Media. Hello, hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Deep in with Christina. I'm your host, Christina Weber founder of We Deepen, WeDeepen.com. If you haven't, go check out the calendar. It's 2022 and there's a lot of exciting experiences, social and transformational to share with you. Today, I'm going to peel back another layer of my existence to share with you. Now, you may know me for being the founder of We Deepen. And before We Deepen, there was feminine weapon. And January 30th is approaching. It's actually, if you're listening to this episode, there's a chance that you're most likely listening to it after January 30th of 2022. But that's okay because Feminine Weapon Day is January 30th every single year. So you can put it on your calendar for 2023, right now, January 30th. It's the ninth Feminine Weapon Day. And today I'm going to get into where it came from, like why the name Feminine Weapon, uh, because some people throughout the years have felt triggered by the name. So I'm going to share its origin and why, how Feminine Weapon Day came to be, um, what it represents, what it means, what we've done this far. And then also as we roll into 2022, uh, this year's theme is the space between stories. So we're also going to dig a little into that. Like, what does it mean to be in the space between stories? And I invited a dear friend, Jorge Torres, to have this dialogue with me today. And fun to share. This is fun. Um, Jorge has recently accepted the role of associate producer for this podcast, Deepen with Christina. So you get to meet him um, as well. Hi, Jorge. Hello. What a privilege to be on your podcast. Ah. It's so good to have you. And I, I'm actually at Jorge's home right now, recording from a beach house in Venice. Him and I are having a glass of wine. We've lit some Palo Santo. And interesting, you know, having a glass of wine, if uh, there was a year, actually, when I first started recording podcast, Your Love Accomplice existed before Deepen with Christina. And um, that particular year, I didn't drink any alcohol. And it was one of the best things I ever have done for myself. So now when I have a nice glass of red wine, which I totally enjoy, it's um, more of a treat. Um, it's really abnormal for me to do. So it's nice to be here and to be drinking a glass of wine, especially five days before my biggest production every single year. And Jorge, though, you stepping in and becoming the associate producer of this podcast is it's 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 like another step forward. It's like another level of growth for me. And, you know, you we have we have met because you've discovered your love accomplice. You enjoyed the podcast. You stepped into the world, um, I guess, into the web, Christina's web, and um, and discovered a lot of experiences and made a lot of new friends. And and now you're the associate producer of this podcast. <laughs> like... <laughs> yes, it all started in 2019. I discovered your podcast, your your love accomplice, and. Um, I listened to the first podcast with, what's your um, friend's name? Amanda Young and Brian Howie are actually the yes. first episodes of that. If you if you scroll in this news, if, in this feed, this podcast feed, you'll see because we dropped Deep In With Christina in the same feed as Your Love Accomplice. So you can scroll back to 2017. Um, you must have discovered it in 2019 then if you're saying that year, however, your love accomplice existed for one year. One thing that I learned of being a podcast host is I didn't do any seasons. And so after a year, I was, you know, I was 
building. I was a startup founder. And after a year, I just, I needed a break. I was doing way too much. Um, so you caught it at that towards the tail end, but I think went back into the archives and, and began listening from episode one. Yeah. I remember the theme interested me because it was on the feminine energy and the masculine energy. And uh, you had chosen Amanda and Howie, Brian, mm -hmm. um, because of, of these energies that they possess themselves. And it was just an interesting podcast. And so I listened to your second podcast and your third. And you had all these interesting people on the show. And I was just like fascinated. And I didn't know who you were. And I just kept listening and listening. And the more I listened, the more I got to know you because you're so candid and so open. And... Um, and I don't know how many podcasts they were, but I listened to all of them. And it's I I really got to know you. And so by the time I met you at one of your We Deepen events, I like knew you already. <laughs> I remember introducing myself to you and meeting you. And um, what was it? We Wednesdays or something? We Wednesdays, yeah. And in January of, of 2019, um, Mason and I yes. did a lot of experiences at her home in Venice. Yeah. And, and you walked to the door and now as associate producer, you know, it's your, you support me in, um, advocating for this podcast and in encouraging me because doing this is it's vulnerable. It's, it's vulnerable to, you know, because I'm always ever growing and changing. And when you speak, sometimes there's a fear of some people locking you into a, a, a version of yourself that once was and is now non-existent and judging you based upon that. And out in the world, when we meet people, I mean, it's just always to remember that we're ever growing, evolving human beings. And when I say something one day, the next day, I might think something so different. So it's vulnerable because I don't know where people are, are locking me into what words I said at what moment and what time. I, um, <clears throat> over the years, I've gotten to know you better, of course, and I've attended a lot of your events, especially in 2019 and pre-COVID. And then it all went away because of COVID. And um, I found myself twiddling my thumbs and really missing that social aspect. And not only that, but also the learning and the growth that took place at your events. So I've always been a huge supporter of your events because they're, I think they're spectacular and I think they, there's such a variety and not only are people learning and growing and shifting in their, in their thinking and emotionally as well, but also the community you created. There's so many people that I met and it was nice to see everyone at your events, supporting your events. It's interesting to hear you say your events because they're actually, you know, they're not, I curate most of the experiences. I don't produce. Um, I rarely produce. I don't want to say I don't produce. I rarely produce because we're going to talk about Feminine Weapon Day and I do. That's my yearly one uh, that I do do. But for the most part, I am playing social chair and identifying what experiences are most heartfelt, heartfelt and um, inspire connection where you go and you don't, it's not just about like, drinking or you know there's silly fun that happens but you you leave as you said like feeling as though you learned something feeling as though you're going having epiphanies um and so i um aim to provide a constant calendar of these experiences i don't have time to produce them on myself i just identify them and say you 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 you, you. these are amazing keep doing what you're doing and i will support you i'll be that 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 those the wind beneath the wings of these experiences, which I like to say, create the human connection industry. Um, so the we deepen represent it, and I, I guess there's some a little bit of like, oh, did, 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 oh, Christina chose them. Uh, oftentimes, people are like, you know, how do you 
what are the qualifications to be an experience listed at wedeepen.com? And there's no algorithm right now. There's an application process to get your experience there. However, they're, they're mainly friends. Um, they're people that I have worked with and have developed relationships with throughout the years, and they are passionate about what they do, and they're really good about really good at it. Uh, so those those are the, the experiences. They're not mine, although hey, you know what's yours is is mine and mine is yours. So maybe they are mine, and we get to share share those experiences. So. I think it was twenty, yeah, twenty nineteen, that I attended your first feminine weapon. I'm trying to recall where it was. It was in, the, it was at West End in Santa Monica. Yeah, and then and then and then I think I attended a second one. Um, Probably they've been happening. This is now the ninth year. Feminine weapon. So let's let's start with unpacking that name. Where did that come from? So I, after I graduated from college, I moved to New York City and I had spent my career in sales, marketing, business development, all in corporate America. I would switch jobs every couple of years. I was really good at interviewing. And uh, I had finally gotten to a place in my career where I was making nearly six figures as the chief of staff for a branding marketing agency. And I, my, my boss, the CEO of the company, when we would walk into business meetings and, you know, we were working with clients like Top of the Rock, Mercedes Benz, um, also some, you know, is startup companies like rug cleaning, cleaning businesses. And I, my boss used to introduce me as meet Christina. She's going to be the next CEO of this company. And one day her and I were in Vegas for a woman's conference, business conference. And she said, you know, Chris, I've been telling everybody that you're going to be the next CEO of this company. Is that what you want? And there we were again, we're at the pool in Vegas and I not one to tell a lie. I just said, no, that's, it's not what I want. And she said, well, what do you want to do? And at the time I had a idea for a lingerie brand. My boyfriend at the time was a big Giants fan and I love sports for the social aspect of sports. But when it was just him and I at home watching the game, he would be so focused on the Giants. And I was missing feeling connected to him. I wanted to feel connected to him as we watched the game. So I thought, well, if I got hot, sexy Giants lingerie, he will pay attention to me. I can make this an experience. So I went online aim to find some giant's hot sexy lingerie didn't exist so that was the first idea well what if we what if i created an intimate apparel brands like yankees pinstripe corset a giant's flirty number with with garters um who will definitely pay attention to me and we'll have a lot of fun and uh and so when my boss asked me that question i was like well i want to do game lace that's the company game lace i want to do game lace and when we went back to New York City, I, I thought, shit, like I just told my boss, I don't want the, the promotion, this idea that she has in her head of where she wants to be. I told her I want to do something else. I better start doing that something else. However, I was 29. I didn't have my MBA. Uh, I thought, you know, who was I going to walk into the... NFL or the NBA and ask for their license to create an intimate apparel brand when I've never designed lingerie either. And so I had a lot of self-doubt. And around that same time, I was out with a good guy friend, Cheo, Cheo Videl. And he was my best guy friend in that moment. And we were at a CeeLo concert and he said, you know, Chris... I created a nickname for you. And I was like, well, what's this nickname? He said, don't let this go to your head, but you're a feminine weapon. 
you're so business savvy, but you're such a girl. And in that moment, I felt as though a cape had attached to my back and I could fly. Like, it's like when someone sees, you know, those compliments that people give you that just really resonate in your heart and you're just like, oh, there's, there's, there's something that they see in me that's true, but I just have, I'm having a glitch in the matrix and I can't see it myself. Well, that evening I went home, I went to godaddy.com, I typed in feminine weapon, it was available, so I bought it, unknowing what it would become. And I continued on my game lace journey. You know, I was out in New York City and I would, you know, go and, and gather with them because I needed to enroll people to support me to develop game lace. Well, at the end of these meetings um, with these really talented, amazing women, I would say, you know, I have this other brand, Feminine Weapon. And their light, eyes would light up like Feminine Weapon. What's that? And I realized in the moments that I am not the only feminine weapon. There are many women with these deep desires and ambitions and they're on a mission to fulfill them. And so I went home and I defined her. A feminine weapon is, yeah, a woman who's aware of her life desires. She's on a mission to fulfill them. Feminine weapon is your inner goddess, your rock star. It's the peak expression of you. And it turned into a movement and a movement not about guns or violence, but a movement about seeing yourself as a weapon for the thoughts that you have and the energy you put forth. We are essentially battling the ills of the world through love. And so I started producing events in New York City because, you know, Game Lace was really, took a lot of capital. Um, and it was, you know, a whole other direction and and when feminine weapon kind of came about it was like well i don't need any money to gather women um and that's what we started doing the first feminine weapon event before feminine weapon day was an intro to Kabbalah, and then we did the toxins in the cosmetic industry and then we did an event on sex and relationships with a therapist and then i was invited to produce a uh, woman rock nyc with claire london um, and her partner at the time. And, and I quit my job. I quit. Um, because I was like, I, I have something else, you know, there's a new direction and this feminine weapon. And actually, so game lace kind of took the back seat and feminine weapon became the forefront of, I could just see again, people were lit up when I would say that name. It's not, you wouldn't forget it. And, and, and people throughout the years have been like, that's so violent. Why use feminine? Why use weapon? However, if I, if this would have been called feminine butterflies, you sure as hell know it would not exist anymore. And people would not pay as much attention to it. It's the polarity that makes feminine weapon stick. It really does. Yeah. So when I first heard of it, I was like wondering the same thing. Feminine weapon, what does that mean? <laughs> but my experience, I think it was for the love of men. That's the year I went to, I believe. Wow. And um, <clears throat> it was right in the middle of Me Too. And you got, I remember you got a lot of crap from women a lot of shit talk. Just women were angry at the at that time, and you were highlighting for the love of men. And but I also remember what it was all about. What 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 interested me was the fact that uh, the proceeds were going to the children, and and I have children myself, so you know, a big part of my heart does think about children and. And, and and what you are focusing on is helping children who come from abuse and from poverty and orphans and trafficking and these are these are vulnerable human beings. They're 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 innocent. Their sense of wonder has been taken away from them. They're lost. And you had mentioned um the um what's the 
The theme is um, a story. The theme for the ninth annual Feminine Weapon Day is the space between stories. That's, that's right. The, the space between stories. And it's just the time we're living in. And that still remains an issue. It's it's a problem worldwide. And <clears throat> people are cynical. The times we're living in are, are dangerous and they're scary. And, and people don't know in what direction this world is going in including our own government and people are scared and losing hope but i believe that even these these events these 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 little things still make a difference and if you can change somebody's heart or thinking and think about what you can do with with something like feminine weapon and and the proceeds going to children to help children out that's a that's a light at the end of the tunnel. That's hope that you're giving, especially the organizations that are receiving these proceeds. You're lighting up their world. They're making a difference. And I think the more people who are made aware of your goals and your vision, I think we'll also be inspired. I was inspired. Mm. Yeah, you did enter... So each Feminine Weapon Day has a theme, and you entered year five, which was the theme of For the Love of Men. So let's let's rewind, though. That, that was then, that had to be 2019 or 2018, 2018, I believe. And the, the first, so, so as I was saying, I, I, I co-produced Woman Rock NYC. This is the fall of 2018. 13. And that event, we had fe- four female vocalists perform three songs each on the stage at the cutting room, which is one of the most beautiful venues, music venues in New York City. If you've been there, you know what I mean. Um, artists crave to perform at, at, at the cutting room. So we had the event there. And I remember that evening, like looking around at the audience and thinking, wow, Women Rock NYC, all these people in attendance are nearly, or I, you know, I, I, I invited them. Like these are all friends of, of mine. And I thought, well, we could do this, you know, like really big if we create a host committee and we have women that come together and, and collaborate and they're invited to be a part of, of the event. And, and so I went back to the venue after doing Women Rock NYC. And I will say at the time, when I quit my job, I was, you know, I was focused on, on feminine weapon and still game lace. This is pre dating stuff. We'll get to when the dating stuff and that led to we deepen. Um, and I was working as an interim manager for female singers and songwriters because I had experience in the music industry. My, ex who I was in a five-year relationship for my longest relationship um, was an A&R for um, one of the big labels. And so I learned the insides out of the music industry in which essentially I had, you know, array of um, female performers that wanted stages and, and had beautiful gifts to share with the world, but they want to share their gifts. And so after that Women Rock NYC, I went to the venue and I said, Hey, I want to do another concert. Um, what, you know, when can we do it? And he said, well, if we give you the show, it's, you know, this is the fall of 2013. They said, if we, if we give you a show around Christmas time, um, it's probably going to be bumped because we got to take holiday parties. They're a big bread runner for the, the, the venue. So probably going to be, can you do it in January? And I was like, January, huh? What's in January? So I went to, um, Google and I started studying, like looking up, like what holidays happen in January. And I saw that January 13th was make your dreams come true day. And I'm like, well, that's cool. We can do a concert for make your dreams come true day. How fun is that? However, January 30th that year was a Monday. I'm like, how am I going to gather people in New York state on a Monday? Uh, ugh. 
And so I, I, and I was thinking, and, and then do you celebrate a day that has been declared online as make your dreams come true day that no one has really ever, no one has heard about, um, but, and you celebrate it on a different day. And so then as I, you know, and, and, and at the same time, so the first feminine weapon day, because there's each a theme, I had connected with Manuela Rana who was uh, or is a photographer, an Italian photographer who lived in Los Angeles. And she wanted to shoot women wearing lingerie. And a friend had connected me like, maybe Christina will shoot wearing lingerie. And when I met her, I said, well, I have this other idea. I'm going to produce this concert and I'm going to get a host committee. Do you want to be the photographer of that? And she said, yeah, sure, I'll do that. And then I met a writer um, Ashley Fairfield and I and Ashley wanted to write about powerful women. So I paired them together and we essentially for three months went around New York City and we photographed women and interviewed women and overlaid like discovered what it meant to, for them to f- be a feminine weapon. We overlaid that, that on those images and we were you know going to showcase these at this big event. And when I was still trying to figure out the day, the first one, Mia Morgan, who is, uh, Mia is, um, if you know Mia, you know what I mean. I, I'm just going to keep it, pause for that because of the work that she does in the world. Um, Mia said, why didn't you just call it Feminine Weapon Day? And I remember thinking, what? No, no, that's weird. <laughs> Can't call it Feminine Weapon Day. And then as I continued on, someone else said it. And they said, why don't you just call it Feminine Weapon Day? And so when the second person said it, I was like, okay, it's Feminine Weapon Day. And January 30th is Feminine Weapon Day. So that became the first, January 30th, 2014. Um, There's a beautiful video that recapping that particular event. And you hear Andrew Bancroft, who was one of the MCs, along with Cindy Winters, and said, today... You're ha- you're experiencing the first annual feminine weapon day, and everyone claps. Um, and and so that was the very first event, and um, we did it. You know, year two, I had this thing around sleep, and so the theme was she sleeps, and we photographed all the women sleeping and overlaid on the images of like what sleeping meant to them. Year three was vision boards. Year four, I was fascinated by the human design system. So we photographed all the women and we overlaid their human design charts. Year five is for the love of men. I was, um, that theme came to me in, um, you know, weeks before Me Too and Time's Up unfolded in the public forum. And it was year five. And I thought, you know, for this theme this year, we've been doing all the everything with women. And each year, men show up, they buy 50% of the tickets, they, I negotiate the venues with them. Um, they donate, they, they, they're in service, like, let's celebrate men and women can elect men in their lives who support them, uplift them, make them happy. And so we photographed the men and displayed those images. And that's what kind of eroded in the attacks around, oh my God, like you're going to celebrate men right now. And I was like, well, I don't know. God gave me this theme and, and we can, time's up and yes, and can exist at the same time that for the love of men exists too. Now in year three is when the charity component came apart, became a part of the event. Um, Delia Janelle um, was one of the, the, the performers at the first year event. And Delia um, was a full-time volunteer for the Orphan Starfish Foundation, um, which places computers in orphanages around the world and teaches the children to use the computers. And Delia being a singer... Um, and just one of the most like open hearted, loving being whenever she would go into these orphanages, she would sing to the children and she would look them in the eye and allow them to feel love, to feel presence of another human who is not there to take anything from them, but there to give them pure love and being in Delia's energetics and um, the work that the Orphan Starfish Foundation and Art Demore, Art Demore is then the organization that Delia founded to bring 
art and healing programs to the same children that the Orphan Starfish Foundation was serving. And this is 13,000 children in 27 countries. These children have been through some of the most horrific abuse. Um, They are survivors of human trafficking, of sex trafficking. They come from extreme poverty. And, and so the, the, Third Feminine Weapon Day elected that and a hundred percent of the proceeds then began to get funneled to these kids. If we were going to gather all the women, like first off, number one is I noticed that, you know, of, of this being like, oh, you know, let's commune and us women gather and do something together. Like we needed a cause to, um, to, to, to commune for, to really harness the power of, of co-creation together when before when the charity wasn't there um it does it it didn't have the glue to stick but now i'll say because now we're moving into the theme of year nine and this is as you said that the theme is the space between stories and this is also the year that the event nearly didn't happen Um, And it nearly didn't happen because it's COVID. Um, It's still COVID. It's still COVID. You know, um, it didn't stop during COVID. I remember Senator Jones. Is that where you had? So Senator Jones is a venue in um, Santa Monica. Um, We had Femme Weapon Day there in in 2020. Uh, And in 2021, we did it on Clubhouse. 15 hours. We did a 15 hour clubhouse event. Um, oh gosh, I woke up the next morning and I often wake up the next morning after feminine up and days and mean like, what is my life? What is my existence? How am I doing this? I am one of the most strangest human beings as in most people would never do what I've done. I've given up a year or sorry, not a year, a month of work. Um, actually a month of salary for the past nine years to focus on raising funds for these kids without um, taking profit from it. With being a mother of the universe, and I know I actually had a, a conversation with a, one of our host committees for this year, and she said, you know, that's not correlating with me. What do you mean a mother of the universe? And I was like, well, there are 150 million orphans worldwide There are 80 million children right now living without a single parent. It's mind boggling. And if we don't do something as the, you know, grownups of this world, then who is? You know, in the things I read and the things I listen to and the things I watch, one thing that keeps, jumps out at me is the matriarchal system that used to exist so long ago and of course we're now in a patriarchal system right and you know it's interesting that feminine weapon almost ended in the midst of an incredible uh, shift in the world and how many women are getting involved in congress and i was just listening recently i'm trying to think what country i think it was mexico yeah it was mexico i heard a report that in mexico it's the first time where more women are involved in government in Mexico. A lot of seats in their Congress, as well as here in America during Trump's administration. So there is a shift in the feminine, the, you know, the energy. And I don't know where it was that I read this, but I remember reading this and it was interesting. It said if, if more women, if, more women ruled the world if there were more women who were presidents and you know and running the show this world would be a better place you know it'd be safer there'd be more peace and that of course has a lot to do with the feminine and the love and the the joy and the and the tenderness and the sensibility and i'm not knocking men i'm just saying you know we're built differently and i think that women lead in a different way and um i'm glad that you chose to continue feminine weapon and i look forward to the 10th year i know that that's going to be amazing it's it's kind of 
10's a big year. It's a nice round number. You should do something really, really huge and special. But uh, the ninth year is special because it survived and it's going to happen in, on the 30th, January 30th. And uh, unfortunately, I won't be here, but I'll be there in spirit. I will be out of the country. Um, Thank goodness, because I, I have a home. Um, I'm staying in Jorge's home while he goes out of town. He has this beautiful um, apartment beach house, and I get to be the beneficiary of it while he's out of town. So he is actually housing me uh, because I've been living mainly in, in Maryland during COVID. So I get to, to stay here. Uh, but you do bring up a really interesting point about you know feminine leadership. And... I don't know. I, I to, to me, there's we oftentimes correlate that the feminine is this like being energy and not necessarily doing energy, and also that when you are in leadership, leadership is a masculine quality, like being. You know, they often say of for a woman when she comes home you know she needs to move from her masculine into her feminine because her her work is mainly like in that doing energy I kind of want to call bullshit on that and I call bullshit on it because I am in specifically around feminine open day it's it's a it's definitely an intense time to rally people for a cause to get them to donate and there's urgency to it because it's this one day it's january 30th uh and in that in 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 my what drives me to it, I can't say I'm not driven by a masculine energy. I'm driven by this feminine fierceness, this m- like mother spirit. Um, and, and it's, it's, it's guiding me. It's not masculine energy. So I just, I, I get a little lost sometimes in 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 that um these references to what is feminine what is what, masculine yeah what is feminine what is masculine uh i think that there's the leadership the feminine leadership is leading from the feminine it's leading from a place of love. It's leading from the place of collaboration. It's leading from a place of nurture. People will often ask, like, how does feminine weapon connect to children? Why are a children's organization? I'm like, well, why not? I mean, they are, if you want to talk about sustainability and whatever cause that you are investing in, I want to make the I'll call it a sales pitch um, for you to invest primarily in children's charities. And here's why. Before Feminine Weapon Day's existence, um, that 10 years of time that I shared that I was in corporate America, I worked as the director of business development for an event production company and we began hosting a gallery a a golf outing yearly and we elected the american diabetes association as the beneficiary for the golf outing and through that i started to have a close relationship with american diabetes association and they um, nominated or elected me to then be the chair of the american diabetes gala so I created at the Water of Astoria in New York City um, this, you know, beautiful gala experience, and brought in, the, you know, the the honorary chair who helped to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the American Diabetes Association. Um, following working with them, I um, when I was the working at the marketing agency, it was an LGBT organization, a woman-owned company, and we started working with the American Diabetes Association to develop their 
LGBT initiatives. And um, so I got really close with the American Cancer Society. And I walked away with that years later, a feeling kind of really disturbed um, because I was also a pharmaceutical rep before that at once. And I started to see that the greatest um, donors to both the American Diabetes Association and the American Cancer Society were the pharmaceutical companies. And so it was this cycle. It was just this cycle that, you know, they don't necessarily want to cure the disease because that's where all the money and funding comes from. There is no money in wellness. Wellness. And and then, you know, I, I when I think of the the when climate change or I think of the children or I think of and um not climate change, I think of climate change and I also think of the animal charities. And it's all human consciousness. Everything underneath of all that is human consciousness. If we raise the consciousness of the planet, then we raise the consciousness. The, 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 the animals will be fine. The climate will be fine. It's a shift in consciousness. And as we study as grownups and we are evolving, we're seeing that the trauma, trauma has been a you know, mental health big topics and we've started to realize that a lot of the um, the things that we have to unwind as grownups were actually built in childhood. And so having 150 million orphans worldwide and 80 million children without a single parent, um, who is going to provide for these children? How are they going to feel love if we don't make them feel love? So when we think of sustainability in our world, it all is going to come from them. It's all a human consciousness thing. So if we can start to heal them and provide this, so that's what Femme Open Day does. A hundred percent of the net proceeds go to provide art, healing, and transformational programs to children who are have been impacted by the foster care system or who live in underprivileged communities. Now, as I mentioned, we're working with the Orphan Starfish Foundation at Art Day Moore. And moving into year nine with the theme, The Space Between Stories, uh, unfortunately, um, and fortunately, uh, the two people who we've been working with for years who had up these organizations, Andy Stein and Dealey Janelle, have divorced. And it wasn't, it's kind of a, a, a shitty divorce experience. And... Um, and it, it shifted um, the energy that can be supplied to Feminine Weapon Day. So we are in now, uh, we're in transition, we're in open, we're open to a new charity partner. And I was recently connected, you know, these magical moments um, as I'm, you know, two weeks before Feminine Weapon Day this year, I got the wind beneath my wings and I'm like, I'm going to do it because, hey, Relate Fest is coming up. We Deepen is building traction again. Um, I'm busy, you know, wanting to, you know, not necessarily use the word busy, but let's be real. I'm busy. <laughs> um, I'm a, yes. And so it didn't, it, it took me till two weeks before the event is when I got the energy to say, I'm going to do it. And when I started talking to people and asking for support, that's when the doors started opening up. When you kind of tell the universe, hey, this is what I'm going to do, it meets you with new and interesting opportunities. And my friend, Timothy Bloom, who's the musical director of Feminine Weapon Day each year for the past five years, he uh, connected me to this man, Chico Brown, who Chico was like, this would be great for Tiffany Haddish's charity. If you don't know who Tiffany Haddish is, Tiffany is, um, she is a black female comedian. She's so authentic and just, I just recently discovered herself. She's got over 7 million followers on Instagram. So everyone else in the world probably knows who she is except me, but I got to discover her through um, her charity endeavors, and she recently founded an organization called She Ready. And She Ready 
um, Tiffany was a foster care child. And as being a foster care child, you have to move from home to home often. And she ha- oftentimes had a trash bag to put her stuff in to go from home to home. And so what she already started with was doing was supplying children with luggage. So it's so simple, luggage. Just so when you're transitioning, you're moving from home to home, you have something to put your stuff in. Um, And you didn't, she said she felt like trash. Um, And She Ready is not only providing now suitcases, um, it's also providing resources. And so this in 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 twenty um twenty two we have now made contact with this organization and the executive director um will be coming uh, this coming Sunday and it's that space between stories because how impactful would it be for this event that has existed for nine years has so much heart and soul and if you go we even have a theme song um uh, and so to be partnering um, or or even entertaining the idea of partnering with She Ready is super exciting. Sounds like a perfect partnership. And I think what you've created and what your whole goal and your dream about the kids, again, that's always tugged at my heartstrings. And that's what attracted me to our your organization. I mean... I was already familiar with what you were doing, but then you had this feminine weapon thing, which I didn't know about. And and then I, I saw the Art de Amor video. I think you posted it. And I saw what that organization was about and how it was children of orphanage. And again, that was beautiful. And that's something that's special to me. And you found another organization that, also helps children pack their stuff. (laughs) And of course, that's going to evolve. And like you said, it's going to evolve into other things that will, again, help the children. And again, the times we're living in right now, they seem bleak to a lot of people. And it's just, it's just a different time we're living in. But your organization and what you're doing really does give people hope and it inspires people to keep going and not become cynical and not lose hope, especially the children. And so I applaud you. I really do. Mm. Feminine Weapon and what it stands for is, is powerful and it's beautiful and it inspires and it moves and it gives people hope and motivation and it keeps people going. So keep doing this, Christina. Um, let me ask you something. How much have you has your endeavors gone to the children so far? We've raised nearly sixty eight thousand um, dollars over the past seven years, and um, yeah, provided the kids with multiple computers, uh, teacher salaries. We sit. We built a music recording studio at an orphanage in Haiti. We've sent dance programs to children in Chile, uh, you know, New York City ballerinas. Uh, We have taught them photography. Manuel Arana had actually gone out to the orphanage and taught the kids photography, Um, DJing, how to be a DJ. So, yeah, we, it's, And I haven't met the children just yet. I can't wait to have that moment where I get to go to the orphanage. But it's, you know, we're all playing our unique roles in the the puzzle. And my role is the weaving of it all together. And then throughout the years, I mean, so many men and women and they's have stepped forward to power um, this initiative um, and and keep it going. Uh, I'm yeah just so blessed in the co-creation and the donations um just even today the senator of washington dc made a donation i know you made a donation today too so to see those donations come um in and this particular event on you know january 30th 
2022 is going to be at a private residence in downtown Los Angeles. It's inside of a toy factory. It's one of the most magical places. Um, and people will, um, as they enter, 5 p.m. is when it starts, they enter and to the sun setting. And there's they're going to head to the rooftop and just beautiful views of downtown Los Angeles. And soulful music is going to be playing. And then an Olympian performance. Uh, I'll just, I'll, I'll spill the beans now if you're listening because you have to go see it in person and I won't tell you the rest, but two Olympian fencers are going to, um, to create a demonstration as the sun going down, as the music is playing. And then after people will be taken downstairs five at a time to enter the silver door into a whimsical art filled performance experience with the, the top vegan chef in all of Los Angeles. Um, and so it's going to be a super special event. 50 people only tickets are 150 plus. And again, 100% of the net proceeds are going to the children. So all the performers, we have a video photographer, a photographer, they're all coming forward and doing in-kind donations and being like rallying behind um, to make this happen. Because, you know, anything that we pay for for this event, if any would think we outpost, is just less that goes to the children. So I'm always in so appreciation of the men and women who show up and just donate their time and their energy and their resources. Um, and through the years, I'll say that's, it's, it's definitely, it's always, uh, I guess my, its own unique medicine journey for me in production, because you get the glimpse at humanity of how well it's doing. Um, you know, the, the and, and I'll say this year, what I'm feeling is people are just like, yes, they're like, they want to do good where before in the past it was like is there a promo code for the event <laughs> or you know that sounds expensive and i'm like just don't get your nails done don't go eat at air one tonight like it's fine like you you can afford this and that's another thing that i would love to inspire throughout the years people often think about you know giving to causes is that they'll give once they're set like once i make a certain amount of money i'll be able to give more and you can't wait. We must sacrifice for the shared life. And so you have, you have to give now. You can't wait to give. And I mean, you think about privilege. There is, you know, the whole thing of like, what are you doing through privilege? We are so privileged. I, like, as I'm sleeping in your house now during the production of this event nine years in you know you would have thought I would have thought that I would have had my own like home right now at this point and I have many homes they're all in community um it actually is queuing I want to cue that TED talk on like the art of asking like you can ask for anything like you are so it's not all relying on this money system to think of how abundant that you are. You are in it through your connections and your community. And when you start asking for more, it'll be given and you ask for that more to share with other people. It's not for the self alone. It's for, um, it's for the other. It's and the betterment of humanity. Yes. Yeah. It's the better of humanity. In a future episode, um, we will have to share more about year five and for the love of men, um, because that was a fascinating year. And um, and also, I'm going to get Kayla on this podcast so we can do an episode specifically focused on the space between stories. Yeah. I really, um, I know that you posted that email or you posted it in your your Instagram share uh, about what she wrote. And I thought that was powerful about the space between the stories and what that theme means and the times we're living in. And um, I really appreciated what he, she had to say. And um, even the images that are representing feminine weapon, right? The logo, um, that's powerful. 
And I like the idea of the two consciousness. And you did talk about consciousness and how that's really what it's about, right? People, con- just, people just being conscious. And something as, as simple as giving up your Starbucks or whatever it is, it's not really a sacrifice. It's actually when you donate to something like feminine weapon and what it's going what it represent and what it's going to it means more and it's it there's so much value and it's it's when you can't afford it and you donate that it really matters and it feels so rewarding you know that's when it really counts i think mm. Hori, i want to celebrate you Thank you for showing up, for saying yes to this new role of associate producer. Um, Thank you for being a great friend. And it's beautiful to be of witness to how you operate in community and and that you share. You share your resources. Um, I really appreciate you. And um, if you're listening, just know Jorge is behind each episode. He's the one pulling that 60-second clip. And if you have your own podcast, find the person who is um, is listening and is encouraging you and grab a hold of them and give them the title of associate producer. <laughs> um, and they can add it to their LinkedIn and their resume. And I actually, and the reason that I thought of doing this for myself is because I am the associate producer of a film called Finding Sandler. And I remember how important that was for David Seth Cohen, who is the filmmaker of that movie, to, you need, we need, um, we need team. And team cannot only and are always be just driven by money, like pay me, pay me, pay me. No, we have to have the space and the time for a collaboration that is about community building and serving the world for a greater good and purpose. So thank you for being that. Thank you for doing your first podcast with me. And uh, any any final thoughts? Um. It's not too late. Come to Feminine Weapon. (laughs) It's not too late. Come to Feminine Weapon. If you miss January 30th, 2022, right now, go to your calendar and put Feminine Weapon Day on for January 30th, 2023. And just repeat that as it's going to happen yearly. Uh, You can even go to Google and you can type in, when is Feminine Weapon Day? And Google will tell you it's January 30th. Thank you all for tuning in to another episode of Deepen with Christina. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with your friends. Also now on Spotify, you can rate the podcast. So do that. Send us some stars. Send us some love. Um, Also, if you have some feedback, you're welcome to share that feedback with me. Send me an email at c at wedeepen.com or go to my Instagram, Christina Weber, and send me a message there. I love to hear your feedback and your thoughts. The show is about us. Who do you want to hear? Um, And what do you want to hear? And yes, please support Feminine Weapon Day. You are a feminine weapon. Access that with inside of you. Um, Whatever gender, it doesn't make a difference. Um, And also identify those people around you who are just, um, who are doing really good in the world, world and celebrate them. Okay. Thank you for listening and bye for now. (laughs) 